All right. Hello. My name is uh, Sam Carlton. I'm a web consultant in Tulsa. Um, I'm going to talk to you about how to get paid with Sphere. Um, if if you happen to be in the Slack uh, Thunder Plains chat and I say something that resonates with you, feel free to drop some uh, Thunderbolt emojis. Um, we'll, we'll just call them that. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is uh, first off is vetting clients. Um, and the big thing with vetting clients is you have to you have to act as if you're kind of talking them out of it. I mean, this sounds counterintuitive, but basically it's it's your professional responsibility. If somebody doesn't need to pay you money for a job, then it's your you know it's a, it's a moral and ethical responsibility to talk them out of it. And one and some of the ways you do that is just like hey is go through hey why not why not do try this with Upwork. You want to build this website? Well, have you looked at Upwork? Does, does that kind of what, what you want? Um, why not just use a pre-existing product like Squarespace? Um, why do you want to do this now? And why why even have me do it? And it, and this sounds kind of scary to set, to go through, but it's actually very healthy and it gets to the real reason why they're asking for the project. Um, you have to find the outcome they're, lo they're looking for, not the website or or what you know what you might think uh they're they're asking for nobody wants a website they want a business outcome uh pricing structure so usually you want to do the first thing is you want to ask for 100 percent up front yep that does say 100 percent up front and this is okay this is what people do um from there if they want a different price you can negotiate down to 60 percent up front and then 40 percent in a month or in, during the next quarter um and what it does is like Usually it's just, if they're gonna say no to the initial price, it gives you a, a step down to negotiate from. Sometimes they'll say yes. The first time I tried this, the client just said yes. Um, the other part is uh, don't, don't always do discounts as a last resort. If they want a lower price, then they need to get a lower outcome, a lower deliverable, and then avoid hourly billing as much as possible. Uh, the third, third part is proposals. So, I like to do three prices in my proposals, an anchor price, a target price, and a downgraded price. The target price is basically a tenth of what you want to make in a year um, from your consulting, uh, whether it's a side project or whatever it is. Um, the anchor price is designed to set the context for all the other options. It's basically the best you can give them. Uh, the target price is probably what they're asking for or a little bit extra. Um, and the anchor price is going above and beyond. And the anchor price is going to be three times whatever the target price is. And then the downgraded price is essentially just your thinking. It's gonna be half of the target price and, and it will be effectively just a report or like a PDF, but you won't actually do any code. Um, if your cl clients consistently pick the top option, that means you're, under, you're, you're still undercharging. Most developers, I'm sure, you're, I'm sure you guys are aware, undercharge. Raise your target price to the first price and then triple your, your anchor price. Um, so this is, I, I do want to provide a real example. This is a real proposal I did with a client this year. Um, and they did pick the top option, which means that I undercharged. Um, and, but these, these options do work. The be best thing about having three options is it gives them three choices instead of two choices. And the reason they would have two choices normally is if you give them one price. If you give them one price, their options are yes and no. So if you give them three options, they can, they can still say no, but maybe there's a smaller option on there that's more scaled down to their budget, or maybe there's a bigger option that they're very interested in having. Uh, contracts, I'll touch on contracts very lightly. Um, I'm not a lawyer. This is none of this is legal advice, just to be, just to be clear. Um, contracts should only be a legal version of everything you've already talked about in the proposal and nothing more. Um, they're not, you know, it's just not worth it to try to sneak anything in. Um, everything that is in the contract should be what you, you and the client have already talked about. Uh, you own the work and the client has an irrevocable unlimited license. This is the licensing I'd like to set up for my projects. Sometimes if it's their clients, they'll want a custom license and that's fair. And they just have to, they, they have to pay for it. And sometimes that'll be an upcharge. Uh, these are some resources. You can just screenshot this real quick. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, finally, what to do next. So, um, in the last four and a half minutes, I have basically he's told you guys how to uh, how pricing works and if you want to if you want to explore this further you can stop off uh, hop on the pricing work slack channel in the, in Oklahoma or you can go to that URL at the bottom sam.lc/pricing 
and kind of dig into the full resources for, for this talk. I mean, I think we have a talk on a longer talk on Twitch as well. You can you can watch through where I go into each of these steps a little bit deeper. 